Do you know this incredible frustration when you draw? You choose a subject. In this case, we've chosen this old weathered tree stump where really quite large parts of it have completely disappeared in the harsh Australian outdoor climate. And we draw it. And we really like it. We've observed it carefully. We've thought about our lines and how we're going to do it. We've chosen our pen, in this case, a 0 0.3 millimeter pen. There's lovely curves and shadows. It's a really interesting subject. As, as we draw it, we enjoy it more and more. And we're feeling quite pleased about the job we're doing as we draw it. We're getting a nice sense of three dimensions. We're getting some nice edges. We're, we're creating uh, some nice shadows that really bring out the form. The perspective of the roughly circular stump is looking okay. Our ellipse shapes look credible. You know, there, there are some tricky bits where it's not very regular in shape and we, we think we're doing quite well with those. It is a really interesting subject. We're enjoying it more as we do it. And so we very happily get it done. So a little bit of hatching there, a few more marks to indicate weathering and where the fibers are coming apart. And then really, without too much trouble at all, we have our subject very nicely drawn, if we don't say so ourselves. And now we just have to do the other bits and our lovely drawing is done. So this is great now we can relax. We've done the hard bit, we've done the subject. Now we just have the things around it, the, the bit of ground in front and the little bit to the side and the stuff that's behind it. We haven't really noticed what it is even because we've been so focused on drawing our stump. But when we look at it, gosh, it's a bit complex. There's lots of stuff here. There's, there's leaves, so we start to draw leaves on the ground. We, we draw sort of some flat lines because we kind of do that when we have ground. There's, there's a lot of gravel here, a lot of little stones, so I, I better draw some of those stones. And we have all the, these trees and shrubs behind, and gosh, it's really complicated. How am I going to draw that? Um, gosh, I, I, I just really want to get this finished now, so I'll they're all shrubs, so I'll do all these leaves in the back of these shrubs and I better put some more leaves on the ground and maybe some more gravel on the ground and a few sticks on the ground. I, I probably should fill up this space with more leaves and gosh, this was really annoying. It was actually harder than I thought doing the background and you know, it doesn't really look very good. It doesn't actually look as good as the stump that I've just drawn. In fact, uh, I think I may have wrecked it. So. Have I really wrecked it? Well, sadly, while I drew a really nice, credible looking stump, the ground in front to each side and the background of my subject isn't nearly as convincing. And this is a common problem. And it partly, I think, comes because we have a focus that captures our interests. And then we have an area that we don't see as being very important, but which in fact has an awful lot of detail in it and is a necessary part of the scene that we want to draw. And once we've drawn our main subject, we feel like the hard work's done, that we should be able to finish it quickly now because this other stuff's not very important. And we're not prepared mentally to put the same effort into drawing it as we did with our subject. We've been unrealistic in assessing the challenge of drawing this whole scene because it is not just a beautifully old weathered tree stump that we're drawing, it's the context in which it sits, and that's all part of the impact of it. And what's happened is I've looked and I've gone, oh, there are leaves, and so I've begun to draw some leaf shapes. But what's happened is I've begun to draw them, and I've stopped looking at my reference and gone, oh, I know what a leaf looks like, and there's lots of them. So I've just tended to draw them all over the place. And I've scattered them way too evenly. They look more like a wallpaper pattern than they look like leaves on the ground, which often in life tend to blow into piles, into groups, 
we have more of them together and they often overlap each other a whole lot more than I did. And there's a similar problem with the gravel. At some point I've just gone, oh gravel, that's like this. And I've just begun to draw all these little circles to represent gravel. Whereas this actually doesn't look anything like this, which is a far closer, more involved, complex scene. Now I do have a video on drawing gravel, so I'm not going to go into that now. But even though there are simplified ways of drawing it, it actually still takes a fair bit of work and effort and concentration, far more than I was prepared to do with this part that I hadn't even really noticed in my enthusiasm for the stump. And of course, it's the same problem behind. I'm thinking, oh, there's just some stuff behind the stump. But when I actually look at my reference, it's very complicated. And being overwhelmed by the detail, I just start to draw this pattern that I decide to use to represent the leaves of these bushes, even though these sharp, spiky, thin leaves look nothing like what I've drawn that looks more like a whole bunch of hands waving at us. And from drawings I see, this is such a common problem. It's easy to spot the subject that so captured the attention and the care of the artist, but the, what I like to call the support acts, the elements around that main subject, clearly have not had the same observation or care in their drawing and end up detracting from the main drawing. So I want to go back to where I just had the stump drawn and I want to finish it but paying as much attention and having as much as a focus in my observation and my line work with the sides, the foreground and the background. And let's see what difference that makes. Here I am trying this a second time. And instead of seeing this foreground and the sides and the background as a necessary evil, as some sort of annoying thing I have to do just to finish the part I was really interested in, I'm going to try and focus on it as just as important a part of the drawing as what is in effect the main subject. And can I tell you that I spent about 12 minutes drawing the stump in real time and I spent about 25 minutes drawing everything around the stump. So in effect, I spent twice as long on doing the support acts for the star attraction. And yet this is the way it has to be if we want to do, I think, a reasonable job of any subject. We need to be prepared to put the time in, in the careful observation, in the thinking, maybe even in experimenting with a few marks beforehand, which I certainly did for some of the parts of this scene, and then into the actual line work as well. Both the number of lines and the care that we take in putting them in. And if you haven't seen any of my videos on drawing the effect of detail, not the exactness of detail, then it really is worth looking at that. I actually have a playlist on that topic now, and I'll probably put this into that playlist because it's all about when we have overwhelming detail, knowing how to select what to draw and how to draw it so that we create the effect of that detail without having to actually do the impossible and draw it all. And that's what we have with all these leaves and sticks and gravel, leaf litter, basically, I, I call it. I'm also putting a little more effort into my stump. I'm increasing the values of the shadows, making them darker to create greater contrast because I'm aware now that as I draw more lines around this stump, I risk it not being as clear, not standing out quite as strongly. Now, as I put more lines around it, I want to still choose to use lines that won't overwhelm it, but the darker I can get the values, the less likely that will be happening. What you can see too here is that while I've put lots of leaves in the foreground, firstly, I've tried to bank them up into, into groups but I also try to make the leaves look more realistic and show more variety in terms of their shapes and the size and whether they're twisted or crinkled or whatever. Some of them, I even put shadow under them or cast shadow onto other objects that they're near to give a sense of three dimensions. 
And we don't need to do this to all of them. We don't want to do it to all of them because then the scene will be too busy and it will, it will overwhelm the stump in the centre. What I want to do is establish a few clumps, a few spots, one of them in more detail than the others, where I draw the detail in more detail and our brain, when we look at the scene, will look at that and go, oh yeah, there's all this leaf litter around. And then all the marks that are more suggestive, the brain will in effect see more than I've actually drawn with them. And it's the same with the gravel. I've also tried to put the gravel into, into little clumps, into little piles. I've not just spaced it round. I've kept observing my reference all the time. At no point did I go, oh, I just need to draw some more leaves now. I kept looking at the actual leaves that were in my reference to see how do they look when they're twisted? How do the different types of gum leaves or other leaves look? What other shapes are here in the leaf litter? Now, you can see now I've began to, that I've begun to move to the background. And this is where it's even more important to suggest the detail because it's almost impossible even to make out the detail. So what I really have to do is draw the effect. Now, equally, I, I, I do want to finish this before my next birthday. So I do have to make some simplifications. Not nearly as simplified as all those waving hands that just had nothing at all natural, realistic looking about them. I'm focusing more on creating some of, some of the shadows some of the, the negative spaces that we have. And I run them behind the tree more than they are in life because I thought that just helped create a greater sense of three dimensions of this stump being closest, of this tree further back, and then of more undergrowth happening further back again. And the more depth we can create in a scene, I always feel the more movement we have because the eyes focus on the closer things and then they roam around when they feel the distance happening. But as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm really drawing the effect. I'm, my lines now aren't particularly matching up with any object that's in the reference, but I'm trying to create the effects of light and dark with my hatching. And now I decide I want to try and make my stump again a little darker. And by now I'm thinking it's just about done. And I'm certainly more happy with this version than I am with the earlier one that I did. So still making things darker and now we'll compare the two. The most obvious thing is that all of the line work in this drawing seems to match, is, is cohesive, is consistent with each other. Whereas in this one, it does seem that suddenly we have this oversimplification surrounding the line work of the stump, even though in this take, it is a little more simplified than where I took it in the final version. And we can see how because I stopped concentrating on the reference and just slipped into a semi-trance mode of, oh, there's lots of leaves, oh, there's lots of gravel. What tends to happen is that we fill up all the gaps which is not how it looks in nature. And where I made my marks here is far more representative of the random sort of effect where we get some things piled up more than others. But I still only drew a fraction here of what was in my reference. There is a lot more here that I didn't touch here, but I drew enough to create the suggestion. And with the gravel, even less so, just a few lines. And I made sure to do my best to create a foreshortening, a flattening of the objects as they move further back because all of these things in the front we're looking a little more down on top of and as they move further away we're looking a little more side on at. So we want to represent that change in appearance as well. And I think this background here, though it was very simplified compared with the photo, is clearly a much better choice than this almost comical use of a symbol to represent the clumps of foliage. The one thing I don't like about this, I don't like about it in both, and that was the placing of this tree. Because what it made it look like is that it's growing out of this stump. And if we look at the photo, the tree is clearly further back. 
I think the solution to drawings that end up looking like this is that we need to be more realistic when we choose what we're going to draw and not just see the main subject that's going to interest us or excite us, but to see the totality of what we'll have to draw. I've left many references undrawn because I just wasn't prepared for the work for the support acts. I mean, we can always just do our subject as an exercise, but if we want to produce a finished drawing, then it's usually best to embrace the whole scene. What do you think? Do you want to have a go? Drawing this and see if not just this really interesting stump can be effectively drawn, but the whole scene. I'll put this photo on my channel community page if you'd like to have a go. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I think this is a really important point. When we look at a reference, it's better that we don't start to draw it if we don't have the commitment at the time to do a good job. The foregrounds, the backgrounds, the sides, all of these elements are just as important for our attention, for our observation, for the care in our marks as whatever the centerpiece that's probably grabbed our attention. So why not have a go at drawing this? But whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.